Hi everyone, this is John from MotionWorks.net back with a Cinema 4D tutorial for you. Not just a Cinema 4D tutorial, this time I'm going to be talking to you about my discoveries in the last few days working with Cinema 4D, Ryzen UV and Substance Painter. Now, if you've watched some of my other tutorials, you would have seen that I have been using up until now 3D Coat to do my UVs, but I got some suggestions to check out Ryzen UV and I purchased it recently and only this weekend have I had a chance to install it and sit down and work out the workflow of how I'm going to integrate Ryzen UV with Cinema 4D and Substance Painter. And I'm obviously just a beginner with Ryzen UV so the actual techniques for using that particular software um, I can't teach you at the moment but I'll do more tutorials as I learn more. But there are some good tutorials on YouTube. But what I can do is show you where I am right now with this workflow that I've worked out. So how to take my model from Cinema into Ryzen UV, do the UVs, and then get that across to Substance Painter. So I've got the 1934 5 window coupe, which I just recently finished modeling. And I've organized all of the objects. Everything's been named and I put all of the different groups of objects onto different layers in Cinema 4D. You can see there's lots of different elements to unwrap. So it's a fairly big project. Important to stay really organized in Cinema as the first step of that process. So you can see here a few things actually do have UV tags already and there's some things that I've already unwrapped using Ryzen UV. And I have to say that the workflow between Cinema and Ryzen is so much easier than what I was doing with 3D Coat. With 3D Coat, I was saving my file as an FBX and I was importing that into 3D Coat, unwrapping, and then exporting from 3D Coat and bringing that FBX uh, back into Cinema and then basically replacing the objects or replacing the UV tags on the objects, which is really slow. But Ryzen is much faster than that. And that's thanks to the bridge that you can use with Ryzen. I've actually already installed the bridge. You can see under plugins here it says Ryzen UV Extended. And here I can choose to export to Ryzen UV. Now you can find that on the Ryzen Lab website. This is a third party developer that's developed the bridge. And you can see there's a free one and an extended one. The extended one has the option for recognizing the edge selections that you create in Cinema 4D and using those as seams in uh, Ryzen UV. And I haven't actually used that technique yet, I've just been learning the basic features. But $3, definitely worth it because you'll see in a sec how much time it saves. Just have a quick look at the options in the plugin. You can see here there's an option for uh, edge selection, ignoring or exporting. I've kept mine on ignore just in case I have some edge selections on there um, by accident. And also you can see the option for UV, new UV is deselected. And that's because what you can do is you can select on objects that have a UV tag and you can export to Ryzen and it will take those UVs across to Ryzen. We'll look at that in a moment. So I'm going to cancel that. So Let's take something across to Ryzen UV and we'll unwrap it. Just let me mention this first of all. The reason I have put separate materials on all of the groups of objects is because I discovered with Ryzen UV before I purchased it that you can distribute islands, UV islands, to different UDIM tiles in Ryzen UV automatically based on the material which to me you know made a lot of sense so what I'm doing because I've got a lot of things here rather than taking the entire car across to Ryzen UV and which would really complicate you know the um, the scene with lots and lots of objects I'm actually unwrapping sections at a time and then when I've unwrapped all of the sections I can export all of the unwrapped objects back across to Ryzen. You saw we had that um, new UVs option unchecked. And when I do that, it'll open up in Ryzen and I'll be able to distribute 
all of the unwrapped groups of objects to different UDIM tiles. So we'll just let's give that a try. We'll try it with a couple of different things and you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to choose something that's fairly small, maybe the peep mirrors. Actually, I won't choose those. Uh, let's see, the mats and the carpets. And you can see how separating my different groups of objects to different layers and soloing them makes this scene much more manageable. You can see that I've actually already unwrapped these. I'm just going to remove those UV tags. I'm going to select both of those. Come up to Plugins and choose Rhizome UV Extended. Export to Rhizome UV. Now it's launched on the other screen. I'm just going to bring that across and position it. Okay, so I've positioned that now. And this is what you see. Here's my 3D view with my objects and here's my UVs. And at the moment, you can see they look like 3D objects. So like I said, this isn't a tutorial on how to unwrap things in Rhizome. I'm just going to do this quickly based on what I've learned so far. If I click Unwrap, let's see what this gives us. You can see it's done a pretty good job, hasn't it? I mean, I haven't really had to do anything at all. And it's already unwrapped those. I'm really impressed with the quality of the unwrap and the algorithm that Ryzen UV uses um, compared to my experiences so far with 3D Coat. You can see it's beautifully unwrapped. Um, and if the entire car becomes this simple, then um, I'm really going to be in luck unwrapping this. I'm sure most of it won't be as simple as these because these are just um, carpet and and mats. Now there's a little bit of um, red discoloration in here. I'm not going to explain um, exactly what that means. I actually watched a good intro tutorial by Digital Meat on the uh, on the interface which is well worth taking a look at. Um, I can set my seams like this I can do it in both the 2D and 3D window press C to cut those and then I can press U or click unwrap to unwrap that and it just pops open like that and you can see there's less discoloration there now basically anything that's red or blue is um, not ideal. They're stretched. You want basically everything to be in the middle here, grey. That way you're not getting stretched UVs. Getting a bit in there as well, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's basically done. Now all I have to do is save this. So when I save, that closes Ryzen UV and brings me back to Cinema 4D. And the reason for that is because in my options, I've got auto close checked. And what's happened is we had those uh, the carpet and the mat as part of the mats, carpets, petals layer. But you can see it's no longer there. I've got it soloed. If I uncheck that, here they are at the top. So it re imports those objects. And you can see it's out of the UV tag, but it does remove it from that layer. So I'm just going to grab those again and just control drag that onto there. And then just solo that again. Okay, now if I just go into my UV setup, you can see if I click on one of these UV tags, there's my UVs. So that's super simple. It means I can avoid body paint completely. I can just use the bridge to go straight across to Ryzen. You can saw it just one click and they unwrapped. Then I'm straight back into Cinema 4D and my tags are in place, ready to go. It's a beautiful workflow. Really, really solid. Okay, so now I'm going to select the things that I unwrapped, which is the carpet, the mats, and the center panel. And I'm also going to select some of the things I've unwrapped before. Let's see. Um, which one is it? Fenders and side pipe. I'm just going to select all of these and take those back across to Rhizome. Okay, so now when we bring that across to Rhizome, you can see there's the objects 
over here in the UV view you can see it's in 3D mode. I'm going to click on flats and just center that and you can see some of the objects disappeared and this is uh, something I have a question I have out on the um, Ryzen forum. What I've got here I've worked out is under UV channel is a default UV set and one named UVW. I don't know where these come from. If I double click UVW this is showing me the other objects. I'm just going to click on flats. So what it's done is taken two of the sets of objects and put them on in the one set and it's taken one of the objects or groups of objects and put it in another set and I'm not sure why so I'm still uh, to learn whether this is a bug or how to get around this. It limits what I'm going to show you next because I'm not sure how to get this set into um, a situation where I can distribute it onto a UDIM. So what I've worked out um, as far as the workflow so far is I'm going to come back to this one here. Now before I distribute these to UDIMs I have to come down to multi-tile and I'm going to set up three even though I know that it's only going to use two. Then come up to the select menu and choose show file data selection dialog. And you can see I've got the center panel material, the fenders and the mats carpet. I'm going to select all three and click distribute in tiles. That's now done. And you can see it's done the center panel here and the fenders. But because the default set wasn't together with this uh, UV set, it hasn't uh, taken it into account. So somehow I've got to work out how to get this one across to uh, the other set. So if you know how to do that, let me know. If you know that's a bug or if you know anything about that, just let me know and uh, I'll keep everyone else updated. But for now, just keep in mind that, you know, notwithstanding um, that issue, I've got about 10 or 15, probably 15, maybe even 20 different materials in my Cinema 4D file. If I can go through and unwrap them all individually, then come back in and bring them all in at one as one, and then distribute them all to different UDIM tiles based on materials, that's really, really handy. Now there is an issue with texel density. Just gonna turn on checker box. You can see that depending on how many objects um, or islands are in each, each set, you're going to use up um, various amounts of space. So some of the texel density on some things is going to be higher, like in this central panel, than it is on the fenders. But there are um, settings inside of Ryzen UV where you can set a default texel density amount. And I'm going to look into that later. And I'll, um, as I learn more and uh, I become more comfortable with it, I'll, um, I'll let you all know um, my findings and what I've done. Now if I was to press Control S and save this, that would close down Ryzen and take these back across to Cinema. Nothing would change as far as my UVs in Cinema because these were already exported from Cinema. But I want to open this file, this is an FBX file inside of Substance Painter. So what I want to do is come and choose File, Save As. And you can see I've done a few tests here. I'm going to just call this Temp2. And I'm just going to close that. Now I wouldn't have that problem or I wouldn't have that issue if I'd set up under my Ryzen bridge to auto close. If I turn that off then I wouldn't have to, um, I could save and it wouldn't uh, close that file. So I'm just going to cancel that. Come over to Substance Painter, choose File New and I'm going to make sure that create a texture set per UDIM tile is selected. Select my file, temp2, open, click OK. And take a look at this. There's my model. Here's my texture set. And that's interesting. Look. It's taken the carpet and the mats and dropped it onto the first texture set. So that's definitely an issue that I have to overcome. But you can see the other UDIM tile has um, the fender on it. So 
once I overcome this issue of that default set, because we want the mats and the carpet to be on another tile, obviously. Once I overcome that, you can see this is a terrific workflow. So in Cinema, I set up each group of objects with a new material, bring that across to Rhizome and distribute those groups of objects onto different UDIM tiles based on that material, save that file as an FBX, open that directly in Substance Painter, and it creates different texture sets for the different UDIM tiles, which is a really nice clean workflow. And then when I finished working in Substance Painter, and I actually use the Substance Painter Live Link plugin that will take my materials across and set them up for Redshift in Cinema 4D. So that's where I'm at so far with my workflow for this. Once I can work out that issue with the texture sets inside of Ryzen, then I think this will be the perfect workflow. So I'll keep you updated with that. But for now, this is John from MotionWorks.net. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in another tutorial.